welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We know what an honor and privilege it is to be there, and we would love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And today, our guest again is Devin Chod. And Devin is the executive director of Fathers of St. Joseph. He's the author of several books. We want you to go out to his website, fathersofstjoseph.org. And we certainly had a wonderful oh. conversation with Devin. And I'm so grateful for the father that I had. I'm grateful for the father that you had. Um, the power of fathers in our lives. And uh, even I was married, I had children. Mm. When I was with my father, I always felt like a little girl. Yeah. He he just had that way over me, and I, and there was I wanted to be a little girl. And the world <laughs> changed the day my father died mm -hmm. in my soul because I always thought as a girl, woman, that the world I was okay in the world if my father was alive. And when my father died, I was like, mm -hmm. who's going to take care of me? So there, I had to make a transference to Jesus, <laughs> you know. And then as I became Catholic, to Yes. St. Joseph and to other yeah. holy saints. Yeah. Well, you know, it's my role too to take care of you, but it's interesting you didn't go to me because I'm not your father, right? Right. So I do have to protect you, but I can't be your father. I don't want to be your father. Right. Um, but you went to Jesus. We go to Joseph. Thank God for the communion of saints because you need that father's touch and that, mm -hmm. that echo. And your father was really echoing the heavenly father's touch in your life that says, you're my beloved daughter and I'm pleased with you. Your father really fulfilled that. He echoed, but it's mm. Jesus. It's, it's God the Father, Abba, who, who says that to Jesus, right? You're my beloved son. And that's what you need to hear. We mm -hmm. all need to hear, no matter how old we are, we need to hear in our hearts, you're my beloved son. You're my beloved daughter. And this is what St. Joseph got to do for Jesus as well, to be, to kind of incarnate that heavenly father's word to him uh, because Jesus had a human nature, right? Uh, you mm -hmm. know, as well as a divine, divine nature. And, and, uh, and, and so you're my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Uh, that's what we want to hear. Well, and you are a great father. And yeah. you have modeled for our children. And, and we always tell our children, the greatest gift we've given you we, certainly is our faith. But we have, by God's grace and mercy, we've made a lot of mistakes. But we've tried to be good parents. Yeah. I tried to be a good mom. You tried to be a good father. Yeah. And you taught our yeah. men, our sons, our son-in-laws, mm -hmm. how to love their wives, how to provide and protect and they're all that. And, and you've really modeled that I for I can them. see it on my gravestone. Maybe I tried. Because <laughs> yeah, we do have to try. And so we're, we're, Devin's going to be with us, Devin Shad, with Fathers of St. Joseph. He's going to unpack more fully a whole spirituality regarding St. Joseph that you can apply in your life that you might enter into the fatherly greatness that God has in store for you. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. at home with Jim and Joy, and today our guest again is Devin Chad. He is the executive director of Fathers of St. Joseph. He's the author of several books, and you could go to his website, fathersofstjoseph.org. Well, we're so happy to have I you back, yeah. and I hope and pray that our family at home is really being encouraged about fathers and an awakening for sons. Um, husbands to say, you know, we got to do something, <laughs> right? Because right? the culture has taken us away. Mm. What What do you think and how can men become saints? Yeah, ooh, good and question. We in the back, fathers yeah. are made, not born, mm. right? Yeah. So you, to Francis, become a saint, yeah. you got yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, okay, so how does a father become a saint? Well, first he has to realize that fatherhood is a call to sanctity, called the sainthood, because I think we're kind of, 
as Catholics, when you grow up, you think that sanctity is for the priests, the religious, the sisters, the nuns, but hey, I've kind of compromised now that I'm a father or a husband or a mother. Well, I've kind of, you know, I've given in to the whole marriage idea. Well, maybe it's not for me. Well, no, no, no. God created in the beginning Adam and Eve, right? Mm -hmm. And so he instituted marriage as a path to holiness. But not only that, two of the most holy people, two of the greatest saints in the world were mother, wife, husband, father, Mary, and Joseph, right? So this is our template. So how can men become saints? The key is, is that they need to have a spirituality. You look at like the Dominicans, the Franciscans, you know, all these other orders, what do they have? They have a rule of life, a pattern for holiness, and that's why we're attracted to it. And as the human father, that, there's kind of a void there, right? But then what we do is we look to St. Joseph and we can see and put together the pieces and find threads to where there's a spirituality there right. mm -hmm. and we can begin to live that. Yes, and again, I, I hesitate to share about your spirituality because I mean, you got it down so much, but I know one of the key components where you seem to begin a lot is embracing silence, mm -hmm. embracing the anonymity, mm -hmm. um, not being seen, mm -hmm. uh, dying to your own dreams. Joseph was a man who died, he was a dreamer, but he had to die to his dreams. He had his dreams, he couldn't have the dreams. Yeah. He had to have God's dreams. And that's difficult for a man because, you know, you want to pursue what you want to pursue. You want it to be known out in the world. But you're saying, no, embrace this hidden life. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. part of the spirituality. Well, yeah, St. Joseph, uh, the scriptures tell us that when he encountered Mary pregnant without his cooperation, the Greek word is lathra. It says that he decided to separate himself from her quietly, which is really secret. Lothar is secret. And so St. Joseph, everything he did was in a spirit of secretness. He didn't go out and, you know, post on Facebook, my wife's pregnant without my cooperation, mm -hmm. or tweet it out, you know, or whatever. Yeah. He, he actually, and then the other part of that is that he enters the silence before God, and the Greek word there is enthomeome, which is, the root word is thumos. Thumos, the Greeks thought was that spirited man manliness, but in this case, it's a spirited manliness that's grieving. He's grieving over this idea that he may not be needed, right? <laughs> God has chosen Mary, he's no longer needed, mm -hmm. and yet, he places it all in God's hand in the silence. He doesn't go to anyone else. He waits on God and waits on God in the silence. And then God gives him the directive. And that's the key for us. That's the key for us. Especially for men. Yeah. That mm -hmm. you've got to learn that. And that's so hard to learn. But that's the hidden place of understanding greatness because your greatness comes from having the affirmation of Abba, your mm -hmm. heavenly father, to say you have a particular calling, a particular mission. And in that silence, as you say in your writings, you could discern who you are and what your mission is. Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's a lot of people who are running around, who are you know, doing great things, but they're, they're so insecure in their relationship with God the Father that they have to get that affirmation from human beings. So they're trying to sponge it up, sponge mm -hmm. it up. But then it either leads to this type of self-exaltation or which ultimately leads to despair, right? Mm -hmm. But when we trust in the Father, that's where everything changes. Then we have a confidence to be ourselves, to be who we're really called to be, but then not worry about what anybody says about us. And I love that this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. We have to ask ourselves, at that point in Jesus's life, no public ministry, no miracles. Why was the Father pleased with him? You know why? Because of condescension, divine nature becomes human, and then hidden obscurity, obedience. Mm. And, and, and God is so pleased with a son who embraces the hidden life for the sake of salvation. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I, I think Beautiful. of, I was sharing about my dad. He wasn't perfect. <laughs> what? Right? <laughs> and so, like what you're, like Joseph was perfect. He was perfect. <laughs> And so where men aren't perfect and I when we did counseling and premarital counseling and marriage counseling men really feel like failures mm -hmm. absolutely in the eyes of the world in maybe in their marriage I'm not do, all these things you're talking about Devin I'm not doing mm -hmm. and so they feel like failures then and they do the exact opposite. They puff themselves up and it's all a yeah. false pride. Yep. So what resources have you developed that mm. are going to help them spiritually yeah. to come to terms with who they really are and who they're not? Yeah, that's, that's great. So the Father of St. Joseph, what we decided to do over the COVID break was we developed this thing called the plan. And the plan consists of five moving pieces. First, it's the path, which is a little booklet, free PDF on our website, actually, that gives men kind of like the a little guidebook on living the spirituality of St. Joseph in really easy format, 
very easy. Then we move them into lead the 40 days to follow the greatness, which is a 40 day video series that gives them the high points of St. Joseph's spirituality and how you can practically live it. And then we have the lead daily devotional, but then we get Kustos and Kustos is like a, it's like an immersion course. It's like a 33 day spiritual boot camp with St. Joseph where he becomes your mentor and your guide and you chronologically follow him through the scriptures. No revelation, no locutions, strictly what the divine revelation tells us, God tells us about St. Joseph. And you fall for those 33 days, but it's divided into seven stages that escalate. And in each stage, you take on spiritual practices that are not just giving things up, but actually doing things, you mm -hmm. know? And this is the key. Like a priest said one Lent when I first came back to the church, he said, this Lent, I don't want you to give up something. I want you to take on a practice that you'll keep for the rest of your mm -hmm. life. That's what Kustos is all about. Giving men a blueprint comprises spiritual practices that they can continue far past day 33, but for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to do. We want to equip men to be able to live the spirituality of fatherhood because we have this spirituality guess, given to us by St. Joseph. The Lord has revealed this. Yeah. And men are struggling with alcoholism. Yep. They're struggling with pornography. Mm -hmm. They're struggling with inadequacy in so many areas. Like I'm, I'm just not enough here. I'm not enough Shame. there. Shame, right? Guilt. Um, you know, maybe I didn't hear all this, and I raised all my kids, and now they're gone. Why should I get involved? Oh, this is this is great. Okay, so fatherhood. The success of a father is not based on the holiness of his children. That's a that's that's false. Because if that was the case then we could really say, is God the father of failure? I mean, yeah. look, eight mm -hmm. billion children mm -hmm. and, and hardly any of them are. Mm -hmm. No, a father's faithfulness or, or holiness or success is based on his faithfulness. A father's success is based on his faithfulness. If he is faithful to God in his vocation. So at any time, like my friend says, we got a lot of elderly guys who join our Father St. Joseph groups, our lead groups, and he says they're like cramming for the final exam, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's important that they cram for the final exam because it's never too late to be the prodigal father that runs out to the child. And in this case, a lot of times we can say, I have sinned against heaven and earth. I have sinned against you. You may think you have sinned, but I have sinned in letting you down. And that's where the reconciliation takes place. And that's what I encourage guys to do. You know, like in forgiveness, there's always a both hand. It's never you're wrong and I'm right. There's even if it's like 90%, 10%, we must acknowledge our 10%. Forget about their 90%, acknowledge our 10% and that begins the healing. Mm. So that's where men have to be in that process with their sons if they're feeling guilty about a number of things. Uh, but but I, you know the touchstone for you seems to be, th those are symptoms you know, that we were just kind of naming. The mm -hmm. touchstone is, a break from reality within ourselves. We really don't know who we are. Mm. Um, somewhere down deep in there, we do, but it has to be called forth. Mm. It has to, you know, like St. John Paul II said on the Evangelium Vitae, in the midst of this culture of death in so many ways, don't be afraid to share the gospel of life. They won't know it is the gospel of life, but as you witness to the gospel of life, it might be suppressed and down there, but it's written upon the heart mm. of men and women, this life truth. Right. And I guess the manhood thing has to be there, but it's just so covered over and so much stuff. But if we're not in sync, you know, if the shirt isn't buttoned in the right place, what, what does it mean to be a son of God? Mm. You're my beloved son. I mean, that, that's the place of peace and the place of fullness. And if it, if it becomes something else, achievement or whatever it is, that's going to go away. Well, I just, It's never going to fulfill. Yeah. And all these other things get straightened out. If I could know that God thinks I'm, you know, pretty great as a son of God, you know, in him. Well, the biggest battle for all of us is uh, to believe and receive Abba, Father's love, to really believe that, to know that in our, in our hearts. Uh, just a personal story. I remember, you know, in writing all these books, you know, you submit them to publishers and, and whatnot. One of my books got rejected, right? And I was kind of down. <laughs> and uh, and I, I went to prayer, went to a holy hour, nothing. You know, dead silence. God's not speaking. I go back. I'm disappointed. I sit down at my desk, and all of a sudden, this lightning bolt comes to me and says, Devin, there are only two things that I ask of you. One is that you know and believe that I love you beyond any, you know, that's it. I love you and you must know I love you. The second thing is, no matter what situation you're in, just respond to that love by giving yourself back to me. Mm -hmm. And see, the thing is, is as men, we think that we have to earn love. But notice when God said that about Jesus, this yes. is my beloved son yeah. with whom I'm well pleased. It was at baptism. Yeah. So for us, once we're baptized, once the Holy Spirit lives in us, we're claimed by God. And God says, that child is mine. Yeah. And now I will do anything to keep it from Satan. And so God the Father loves us, but 
what we think is as men, we've got to earn that love. Yeah. We've got to prove right. it to God. I'm yeah. a good son, yeah. you know? But well, you mentioned the pa passage of the baptism of Jesus, and I, I grew up Catholic, wasn't really catechized, probably didn't read the Bible much, and then left the church, so to speak, and became radically converted, loved the Bible, started reading the Bible, older, you know, older in my life. And when I read that passage, just like you, that baptism, he said, this is my beloved son. And you know what I said? I said, he didn't do anything. Why is he saying he did? Just, yeah. just like that, I said, yeah. he didn't do anything yet. Yeah. Like, what's that? But that's what I needed to learn. And yeah. that's what I need to convey to my children. Because, and I find the best time to convey it is when really they haven't done anything. They're just born when they've done mm -hmm. wrong. Now, Jesus mm -hmm. never did anything wrong. But to love them and say, I love you. Mm -hmm. Not because of what you do or don't do, although there's great implications yeah, yeah. in this, and you're in a pickle right now or a mess. I love you because you're my son, you're my daughter. Yes. There are still things you have to face and we got to work through. But I love you. Come here and sit on my yeah, lap. Yeah, come come yeah. here and, it's, and I, I, the, yeah. it's, sit right here. I love you. We still got work to do. But that, that's that thing, and that, that's what sets everything back into place. And you learn that when you've not done anything much or you've done wrong, and somehow God's love comes in. But we need other people to tell us that. Mm. It's not enough, I'm, I'm good, I'm nice, I'm lovable, <laughs> I'm a child of God. No, even, even say the good thing, I'm a child of God. I'm a, it, there's something about you can't do that to yourself. You have to hear it from on high, and you have to hear it from another person mm. that says, I, I love you simply for who you are, the essence of your being. I love you. I will always love you. I, and I can't even say where you're going to wind up or what's going to happen, but I will always love you because you're my son, you're my daughter. Yeah, like with my kids, you know, I, I say to them, like, if they do something bad, do you think I love you less because you did something wrong? Or do you think I love you more because you did something great? No, I love you just for you because you're mine, but I might be disappointed and I might be, you know, excited, but it doesn't change how much I love you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the key with God. You know, we might please God or displease God, but his love for us never, ever, ever changes. And the thing is, is God the Father's love literally bleeds for us mm. through his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's the way a father's heart is. A father's heart literally will bleed for his child if he loves his child. And how, how are the men responding? Oh, man, it's amazing. Tell me. Kustos is Where just... Where are you getting the guys from and what are they in? Like, yeah, so, like? so we, so yeah, yeah, right. So there's people, a lot of times, well, basically there's a several uh, touch points. The path, which is the free PDF, which introduces them to spirituality. So that's just been downloaded just incredible amount of times. But then, and then we have men's conferences where they give away the path in a hard copy version um, to multitudes. But once they get a taste of it, these lead men's groups are what's, kind of like springing up all across the nation around the world. In fact, we don't even know how many there are. And we just keep finding about, yeah. like in Ireland, I just found out that they have five chapters we didn't even know about. Mm -hmm. You know, Australia, we had mm -hmm. chapters we didn't even know about. So The, the five missing chapters. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so it's amazing, you know, these guys are getting together using lead mm -hmm. as the content, the basis for their small groups. Um, but the Kustos consecration yeah. is really what flying off the show. What does lead stand for? Lead is listen to discern your mission. So that's right. embrace silence embrace your essence which is being a man in relationship to woman okay um, a assume your authority and then d discover the disciple in your child which is embrace a right. child i love when you say that in another way you've said it is adopt your child spiritually yes, adopt, adopt your child. child when i first read that i was like what is he talking about because you can have a physical relationship and you brought this child yeah. your wife brought the child forth and it's there and, and yeah, we, we, but we don't understand we're responsible Mm. to introduce them more fully or to stir up the gifts that they're given to them, adopt them spiritually. This is your obligation, your responsibility. Yes. A lot of guys don't know no. that. Any man can be a <laughs> biological dad, but it takes a real man to be a spiritual father. And we do that, yes, through spiritual adoption, which means, like Jesus says, whoever receives one such child in my name. So the father receives Christ in that child. And when the child recognizes that the father sees Christ in the child, the child's more able to receive Christ from their parents. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. We gotta see Christ in our children, even if they're acting up, even right. if they're rebellious, even right. if they come up with teenage pregnancy, whatever mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. see Christ in the child, and then that child will more likely embrace Christ. Yes. Yes, we have no right to relate directly to our children or to our wives or to ourselves. It's always through the mediation of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have no right to think, speak, or touch them. Mm without going through the face wow. of Jesus Christ. Wow, that's right? impressive. Mm -hmm. well, we're going to take a break at this point. We're going to hold you over for the next segment. <laughs> All right. I hope that everyone is enjoying, and more than enjoying, but you're saying, hey, I'd like to pursue a deeper relationship with Christ through St. Joseph. He has the Kustus book and Consecration of St. Joseph, but also the spirituality that he's been speaking about that you can actually know, walk out, and live out. We'll be right back. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and we're wrapping up our conversation yeah. with Devin. I feel like it's been on fast speed fatherhood. <laughs> yeah. It's like everything you needed to know and want to know and the ways that you want to share and bring Devin to your community and ways that you can get in touch with him. Certainly go to his website, Fathers of St. Yeah. Joseph, and learn about that and and. And say, you know, we join don't have it. a and join it. I don't have a group like this in my parish or even in our diocese. How can we get started? You know, I was thinking we're coming back for this final segment. It's just you know, several minutes, so we don't have much time. And so, well, where, where do we go? And I'm thinking, I just want to hear him say again why this is so important, why mm. true fatherhood is so important at this time and at this juncture. And and I was saying to myself, well, you're going back to the beginning of the show. You got to keep building. And then I thought of what uh, uh, the Holy Father was saying in his document on uh, the Father's heart. Um, we need to go back to the beginning. Mm. Mm. So what is he saying, back to the beginning? So he's talking about Joseph in the Old Testament and the place that Joseph took out of this great suffering, mm -hmm. being left for dead and so on, being sold out by his brothers. But he comes to this great place with Pharaoh and he comes to this place and he has mm -hmm. all the food that's needed and Pharaoh says, go to Joseph, go to mm -hmm. Joseph. If he needs, go to Joseph. Back to the beginning, back to the beginning of this show. And now, you know, what you're putting forth and what's being put forth at this time is that we need to go to Joseph now, perhaps more than ever. Saint Joseph, the the, the father of of Joseph in every gospel, it says that, right? He, the son of Joseph, the son, son of, of Joseph, Joseph, the son yeah. of Joseph, the son of Joseph. So just lay it out there, your heart, your passion, what you're offering, the importance of this to, to men and women alike for renewal within the church and awakening in this world. If we don't get this right, what are we going to get yeah, right? Yeah, we're not mm -hmm. going to get it right Yeah, because it's the foundation of everything, right? Society goes by with the family, the family goes by with the father. We need to go to Joseph. And the reason we need to go to Joseph is, the key here is this, like we talk about the inner city, the ghettos, and all this fatherlessness that's rampant, and the, the amount of fatherless children that are in prisons, et cetera, et cetera, and how this is ongoing. Now you've got like, what, 78% of children live without their biological father in the black community, 52 in the white community. Okay, so what's going on here? We can't reach those guys if we're not doing it ourselves in the church. The church sets the pace. Yes. And so where's the church have to look? The church looks to the man who embodies fatherhood in, in, in an I would say a perfect way, St. Joseph. And so why is it we need St. Joseph? We need to look to him so we can understand how I can live it practically on a daily basis. This isn't ethereal. This isn't just a nice idea. Yeah. This is real stuff, practically. Right. And that's what we lay out in Kustos is that there's, we have 33 practices. So all about embracing the hidden life and how to pray, how to embrace hidden sacrifice, how to embrace your wife, date nights, 10 minutes with your wife, blessing your wife, embracing your children, daughter yeah. dates, man yeah. dates, all that stuff, living the liturgical life. We've got to get this yeah. right. So we give them a target that they can shoot at. Yeah, and this is something that anybody can implement themselves. Uh, they can implement in a parish, a diocese Absolutely. can implement mm -hmm. this, or various association and groups. You got something all laid out for you that's so, very, very solid. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, Devin, Nobody has to reinvent the wheel. No, no. Mm -mm, just tap in. That's Devin, right. It's been wonderful to share with you. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. your word is a prophetic word. It shouldn't have mm -hmm. to be prophetic. It's so clear in terms of the natural law and what's written upon the hearts. Mm. But God has called you for such a time as mm. this Amen. to encourage men with a way of spirituality that they would not only speak about being fathers, but would incarnate, that people would see they would in flesh, the mm. word became flesh, and that fathers, true fatherhood, would become flesh uh, before other men and come to Christ and come to St. Joseph. Mm. Icons of God the Father. Mm. Thank you so Amen. much. God bless you. God bless you. What a rich show uh, this has been. What a word for this time. And we pray that in the midst of this sharing with Devin, that somehow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's given to you so that when you say, Father, Abba, Father, no matter how broken your relationship may have been with your earthly father or whatever it is, that God wants to say, you're my beloved son, you're my, my beloved daughter, I'm really pleased with you. So that when you, maybe you could just say, Abba, Father, Daddy, let the Holy Spirit witness to your spirit, no matter how old you are. You are a child of God. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. And that something just clicks and you're at home in your own body and you look forward to seeing him one day face to face. Keep it on EWTN. God bless you and all of your loved ones. Bye now.